Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my question and answer segment entitled Friction's Pinion. Let's take a look at today's question. Mardi Gras Man 23 asks, Why does Lego hold its value better than other collectibles like comic books, baseball cards, beanie babies, things like that? Uh, Mardi Gras Man did a video, uh, and in that video he talked about uh, kind of some older collecting principles that we've had to deal with back in the 80s and 90s. Um, when you collected baseball cards, um, there seemed to be a time period uh, where they were uh, just everybody was collecting them. Uh, and you, know, you look back now and they're virtually worthless. Uh, you had a, the same kind of time period with comic books, uh, where a lot of people saw value in comic books and bought them and now they just don't seem like you can even get what you paid for them back. Uh, same with Beanie Babies. And uh, in his video, which I'll put a link to in the description, so you can go watch that, uh, kind of get a little bit of background and kind of what he was trying to get at, but uh, he was really wondering why it seems that Lego holds its value much, much better than those other things. Uh, and for me, I think there's probably a, a few reasons why that happens. Number one, anything that we collect, it's only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. So right now, you can buy Lego, or if you have some Lego still in the box from the last, let's say, five years, even, uh, five to ten years, it seems like, uh, especially some of the larger sets, are very, very expensive in the box, like a Cafe Corner or Green Grocer or some of the Ultimate Collector Series Star Wars sets back from the uh, early 2000s. And they are. They really do. I mean, if you have one of those in the box, you can get a lot of money for it. Uh, and one of the reasons is, is because LEGO has become incredibly popular uh, over the last 10 years. There are more and more and more people buying LEGO. There are some people that are buying LEGO just an as an investment, and there's other people that are buying LEGO uh, to actually have the LEGO, use the LEGO, play with the LEGO. <clears throat> so we're right now in that same time period as we were back in the 80s, the late 80s and early 90s with baseball cards. I mean, they were just incredibly hot. It seemed like every kid was buying baseball cards. We also had that same <clears throat> time period with comic books. Uh, and then later, uh, you know, if you're younger, you might remember that with Beanie Babies. I mean, they were hot. You could find them everywhere, even in grocery stores. You know, people catch on to something, and they're drawn to it for whatever reason. And usually when something becomes as hot as LEGO is right now, it's a combination of people who enjoy the product and also people who want to resell it because it's a very good money-making opportunity. I mean, you can start entire business is based just off of reselling uh, a product that's very hot to a lot of people. So I think that right now what we're seeing uh, is <clears throat> there's just so much more demand than there is supply. People are entering in to collecting Lego. They're wanting to go back maybe fill out a certain theme, you know, have all the modular buildings or maybe they like certain uh, sets like the Star Wars Ultimate Collector series, you know, and they're they're adults now, and maybe they have a you know more discretionary income than some others, so they can afford to go back and buy these more expensive items if people still have them laying around. And each time one of those sales happens, the item goes up a little bit. The rest of the people that have it see that the price goes up, the price goes up. Well, eventually, what happens is, is you're going to have a time to where people start fading out or phasing away from buying Lego so the collector value will start to dip. Now that can be while something is you know being released and then all you have to do is wait till it retires and there you go price goes up again. But eventually there'll be so much of it that people are putting back and putting in the closet that we'll catch up with ourselves and everybody who wants set X will already have it or it will be priced so high that no one can buy it. And then the prices will start falling. And eventually, over, I can't tell you how many years, but over time, we'll have the same type of thing. We'll look back on LEGO and say, yeah, LEGO was great up until these years. And then everybody was buying it, everybody was selling it, and those sets aren't worth anything. 
and you won't be able to get back what you put in them. That's looking at Lego from a collecting, you know, in the box, buying it as a specific set that you want for whatever reason. <clears throat> for me, I guess there are some things like that. I specifically really only collect minifigures in that way, so I will get some of the more expensive Comic-Con minifigures or Toy Fair minifigures or something like that. And yeah, I will buy some of the more expensive ones just because they're rare and I want to have a complete superhero set, right? So I want to pick up all the sets that are like that. The rest of the sets, for me, I just buy for myself. So if I happen to have and I have done that accidentally uh, left something in the closet because my kids got to a certain age and uh, you know time went by and just never got it out and built it and I looked back in the closet <clears throat> and I had an unopened green grocer which were they at that time they were going for about 850 to 900 dollars a box and we just went ahead and decided you know we're just going to open it because we wanted to use it in our Lego city uh, you know, and maybe some people would have turned around and said, hey, you know, I paid retail for that. You know, one, I don't remember how much it was, probably 129 uh, 149 something like that. Uh, you know, they would have maybe sold that and taken that extra money and bought more Lego sets or bought something else, and that's fine. Uh, but for us, it was really the, what was inside the box that we were more interested in than the value of the item uh, if we were to resell it uh, sealed. So... You know it yeah we've seen what happens with baseball cards we've seen what happened with comic books beanie babies and you could probably add if you collect other things you could probably add a number of other things on there and yeah I think at some point we will come to a place where we look back and say if you're looking from a collectible standpoint that yeah Lego you know maybe we'll say it was overproduced or whatever but there'll be a point in time where a certain range of Lego is not as valuable as Lego that's older than that, uh, if you happen to have it in the box. Uh, really, I guess it would affect all Lego, but you know, it, something's worth what you can get out of it. Um, so if you're buying to hold, uh, that's great, but keep that in mind. The more years we have, and you can look, you can find them on the internet if you look at grabs, of how much of each set does Lego produce that number is going up and up and up and we are right in the middle of a very incredible growth spurt for Lego and popularity for Lego and that will create at some point a place where it starts to drop off you know so you want to kind of diversify what you're doing if you're just simply buying for value later uh, that's how the rest of us got caught up with you know millions of baseball cards from the late 80s to the early 90s that aren't worth the paper they're printed on uh, because we were still buying 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 without taking a step back and looking at the you know billions and billions of products that were being made now the one thing I will say that Lego is different uh, I think Lego holds a little bit different value than these other things and I know the video is getting long so I'll be quick here but baseball cards are about United States sports figures. Comic books are about United States uh, comic book characters, if you will. Uh, they can be translated into other languages, but they're still about people in the United States or things that were created uh, based in the United States. Um, Lego doesn't really have that problem. Lego can be enjoyed by more people uh, with more diversity than any of these other things and I think that helps Lego a lot so even if you do have Lego and maybe it's not worth as much as something else in the box I think there will always be a way for Lego to be uh, valuable to people because it's something that can easily be passed on because it's more than just a card with a picture on the front and statistics on the back or a 20 page story you know that you can read it's something that you can used to create anything you want. So it comes in different colors and sizes and shapes and anyone can pick up Lego and start using it. <clears throat> you, you know, you don't build a masterpiece, you know, right away, but you can at least just pick it up and enjoy it. Uh, you can't say that with the general population as much about the other things that we were talking about. So I think that will help Lego in time, uh, you know, hold its value. 
uh, but it's it's a little bit more special than some of the other things, uh, and it appeals to a much, much, much broader audience. So that's my long answer uh, to your very short question, uh, but I hope that's kind of what you were looking for, that at least that's my thoughts on it. Uh, I appreciate the question, uh, and I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to you uh, with an answer, but... Uh, I got it done. <laughs> I said I would. It just took me a little bit longer than I thought. So uh, thanks for the question, Mardi Gras Man 23. And thanks for watching, guys. And, you know, in the comments, won't you leave me your thoughts? You know, do you agree with that? Uh, do you disagree? Do you have other thoughts? I'd love to hear what you guys think. So thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time.